So here it is, my first belt drive build. I know it's been a while since my last video. Building a house is a lot of work, but I'm trying to get more done. For the board colors, I kept it simple. In black, on black. Black. You can't go wrong with black. Like many of the great debates throughout history, like Android vs. iOS, or the classic CISC vs. RISC for the older computer nerds, to AC vs. DC for the very old electricity nerds, in the electric skateboarding world, there's belt drives vs. hub motors. After building and riding several hub motor boards, I finally decided to try a belt drive myself. In this video, I'll go over how I built this board, and in part two, which I'll really try to get out soon, I'll do some testing and compare it to my other hub motor boards, and get into the belt vs. hub motor stuff. There was an unexpected event that makes doing the comparison a bit tricky though, which I'll get to later. This video turned out a bit longer than I expected, but I'd rather include more information to hopefully make it easier for anyone who wants to build a similar board. Many of the things covered in this build also apply to a hub motor setup. To start, let's quickly go over what you'll need for the build. I'll start with the obvious. You'll need trucks and a deck, four wheels and bearings, and the usual nuts and bolts to attach the trucks to the deck. Now for the parts that make the skateboard electric. You'll need the belt and gear to attach to the wheel, a motor, the bracket to mount the motor on the truck and connect to the pulley, some containers, I use this one for the batteries and this one for the ESC. These are the same containers I used in my longboard update. You'll need screws and washers to attach the container to the deck, and I used this Gorilla Tape to cover the screws in the battery container to protect the battery. I also added some Velcro to help hold the battery, which I'll go over more later. And of course you'll need grip tape. I used the same carpet as my updated longboard. Like in my previous builds, the first thing I did was prepare the ESC container by cutting the center of the lip on the bottom so it sits better on the concave board. This step isn't necessary, but I think it's nicer. Just remember to wear eye protection. Then I put on the grip tape. I used the same outdoor carpet as in my previous longboard update video. I also used the same spray adhesive to stick it to the board. I found a rubber runner at Home Depot that also works well that I'll include a link to. I went over the process a bit more in that video basically the same as putting on regular grip tape. I just really prefer non-abrasive grip tape for electric skateboards. Next I mounted the trucks on the deck as usual. I used these 9 inch caliber 2 trucks. They're reverse kingpin trucks, so unlike shortboard trucks where the kingpins are facing inside, they should be mounted with the kingpins facing the front and back of the board. The carpet is a bit thicker than regular grip tape, so it helps to poke holes with a thin screwdriver. Some people like to use risers to give the wheels a bit more room to turn, but I think this board will be fine without them so I can keep the ride height a bit lower. The deck is 31 and a half inches and cruiser shaped. I ended up drilling a second set of holes in the front of the board to make the wheelbase a bit longer. I don't think a deck like this needs such a long nose. The cutouts are now in the wrong place, but that shouldn't be a problem because the nose is narrow enough to not easily hit the wheels. I think these trucks are a good fit for this board, but there was a bit more work required to mount the motor to these, which I'll get to later. Once the trucks are on, I then put on the bearings and wheels. For the wheels I used these 83mm ABEC type wheels I bought from the same seller as the ESC and motor. For the bearings I went with these Bones Reds that also come with spacers. They're not the cheapest option, but I think they're worth a few extra dollars for a smoother ride. Skate Shred also has some cheaper ones that are decent. Somehow the video file with the footage of me putting on the bearings got messed up, but it's pretty straightforward, just like any regular skateboard. Just push in one bearing the best you can, then put in the spacer, then push in the other bearing the best you can. Then you can tighten down the wheel, like I am here, to make sure the bearings are in tightly. I slightly over tighten them and then back off a quarter turn so that they spin freely. Next I connected the motor and belt drive. The first step is to attach the 36 tooth gear to one of the wheels. You can choose either rear wheel. I don't think the side really matters. When accelerating very quickly or braking hard, the board might slightly pull to one side, but it's barely noticeable and easy to compensate for. These wheels are not exactly symmetrical. The gear is meant to fit on the back side of the wheel. The front side is more rounded and has a shallower cup. The back side has straight edges and a deeper cup. The wheel gear threads weren't fully cleaned out after they were tapped, so I had to first run the bolts through to clean them out. Then I held the plate on the front of the wheel so the holes lined up with the openings in the wheels so the bolts can pass through. 
I screw them in one at a time just to keep them in place so they'll still be loose enough to move things around to get the other screws in place. Once I got all the screws started in the gear, I slowly tightened them down in a few passes in a crossing pattern to make sure the gear is tightened evenly and stays straight. Now that the gear is on the wheel, I went to put it back on and noticed I have a small problem. As I mentioned, these are 9 inch caliber 2 trucks, and I think this kit was designed for 10 inch trucks, which I think are narrower at the ends. Luckily I have the grinder that I used for the plastic containers. I had to round the corners of the edge of the truck. This is a small grinder, so it took a little while, and I went through a grinding disc or two. It got the job done though. Then I went to put on the motor mount and ran into the same small problem. The mount wouldn't slide down far enough, so back to the grinding wheel. For the truck mount, I needed to flatten out the curve on the bottom, which is where the mount was getting stuck. After about 20 minutes of grinding and another disc or two, I finally got it on. I'm guessing you wouldn't have to go through all this grinding if you used the 10 inch version of these trucks, but I actually don't mind because I think these 9 inch trucks are a better fit for the deck I'm using. Also it would go faster with a more powerful grinder. So now that everything fits correctly, I can continue installing the drivetrain. For the motor mounts, I use this DIY electric skateboard mount that's specifically designed for the Caliber 2 trucks. It's not the cheapest, but it's more solid than some of the other mounts I saw. There are other good options though. I screwed on the motor bracket to the truck mount first. I didn't tighten them down yet though. You need to always tighten the truck mount part first. If you tighten the engine bracket to the mount before that, it'll restrict the truck mount from being able to clamp down on the truck. Now I attach the motor to the bracket. I also didn't tighten this too much so I can slide the motor around to fit the belt. For the motor I used this 170 kV 6374 motor with sensors. It has a 10mm shaft instead of the more common 8mm, so I made sure to get this 14 tooth pulley gear together with it. Then I put the wheel back on so I could make sure the mount was in the right place on the truck. There should be just enough room for the wheel to freely spin. You should definitely add thread locker to this bolt to make sure it doesn't loosen. I did that after it loosened on me. Then I took the wheel back off so I can finish tightening the engine bracket. When tightening the bracket, I held it in place to add some clearance under the motor to give the trucks room to turn. These are the only screws I didn't use thread locker on. They really grab into the aluminum and are already very difficult to open if you ever need to make adjustments. Now we can put the wheel back on. Just make sure to put the belt through first because I don't think it'll fit over the wheel. I used the 270 by 5 mm belt. I noticed that the truck wasn't able to fully move on the motor side because the bracket hits the deck. I wasn't able to correct it with this motor mount because it was at the limit of the adjustable range. Adding risers would add more space, but I decided to leave it because there's enough movement for regular turns, and sharp turns is what a kicktail is for. Next I put the small gear onto the motor. I made sure everything was lined up well and then tightened down the two set screws. Then I put the belt back on and tensioned it by sliding the motor forward. While holding the belt snug, I then tightened the four motor screws. You want it tight enough that the belt won't easily slip, but not too tight that it puts a lot of load on the motor bearings. As I learned the hard way, you should also use thread locker on these screws. That's it for the drivetrain. Next it's time to put on the controller and the power, which are the ESC and batteries. But first I had to touch up the scratches with my black marker, because it has to look good at least once. The ESC will be closer to the motor, so I started with that. The first thing I did was check how much clearance I would need to avoid hitting the motor. Then I made sure the container was centered by checking for equal distance on both sides and marked where the motor wires needed to go through the container. Next I carefully drilled the hole using a half inch brad point drill bit. I drilled slowly to avoid cracking the plastic. The half inch hole isn't big enough so I drilled a second overlapping hole next to it and cleaned it out with a blade. Make sure the hole is big enough to leave room for the wire to freely move so it won't get stuck when the truck moves. Now all the motor wires can fit through. Next I roughly positioned the ESC battery container and batteries to make sure all the wires will be able to connect together. I also left enough room so I'm able to fit the remote in the container for storage. Once I got the ESC in place, I marked where to drill the holes to mount it in the container. To mount the container I added another hole to each corner. Then I drilled all the holes with a 1 8 inch bit that is roughly the exact size of the screws to pass through. Next I positioned the ESC and battery containers to mark where the wires will pass through. 
I made sure to leave enough of a gap for the container lids to fit. Then I positioned the wires and marked where to cut. I started with the battery container and first cut the bottom part. Then I put on the lid and marked where to cut. There's also a small lip on the inside that needs to be cut. Now a final test that the container closes properly. Then I just repeat the same process for the ESC container and make sure it all fits together. Then I centered the container on the deck by checking that there's the same distance on both sides using a hex key and marked where to drill the holes to mount the container to the deck. I drilled the holes in the deck with a 1 32nd inch bit, which is smaller than the screw, so it'll tightly hold in the wood. For the screws I used these number 6 1 half inch sheet metal screws, and for the washers I used these number 8 stainless flat washers. I first screwed the container to the deck. Then I stacked three washers under each of the ESC mounting holes to prop it up a bit above the container. I tried to keep it in place carefully so the washers don't move before I can put in the screws. I then check if the screws are tight enough by testing if the washers can slide around. Now that everything is secured in place, I can connect the motor to the ESC. First I plugged in the 5 pin JST connector for the hall sensors. Then I plugged in the three motor wires. As a starting point I matched up the colors, but the colors don't actually matter. Next I hooked up the battery to test the ESC and motor. Everything is basically working well, except the wheel is spinning in the wrong direction. You can see it more clearly when I move the wheel slowly. This is very easy to fix. All you need to do is reverse any of the two motor wires. Here I swapped the green and blue wires. Now it's spinning in the correct direction. You can also use the reverse button on the remote to change direction. But on this ESC that doesn't work well because every time you turn the board off it'll revert back to spinning in the wrong direction. I was probably a bit too zealous to hook up the motor and I forgot to make the hole for the power switch. I should have done this around the time I drilled the hole for the motor wires. The switch fits in a 1 half inch hole, which is the same size I used for the motor wires. It's threaded and is secured to the hole with a nut that screws on over the wires. A good location for it is on the side of the container in front of the fastener. I just need to drill very carefully so I don't smash the drill into the ESC. Then I feed the switch through, tighten the nut, and hook up the connector. Now that I got the switch installed, let's move on to mounting the battery container to the deck. This process is very similar to the ESC container. First I marked where I'll drill the screw holes, then I drilled 1 8 inch holes. Make sure the holes aren't too close to the edge so the washers will still fit around the hole. Then I position the containers to line everything up and leave room for the lids. Once everything is in place, I mark the holes with the drill bit. Then I drilled the 1 32nd inch pilot holes for the screws. Then screw the container to the board. I put doubled up pieces of Gorilla Tape over the screws to protect the battery. I also added Velcro to help support the battery to reduce the pressure on the plastic case to avoid breaking it as I showed in my previous video. For that board I ended up switching to a 5 amp hour battery with a stronger container made by Lock & Lock. I'll have a link in the description. A few common issues people have had with the batteries in ESC that you should watch out for are not properly insulating the motor wires causing short circuits, using a parallel connector instead of a series connector for the batteries, or using an ESC configured for the wrong voltage, like a 6S ESC with 10S batteries. The ESC I use in this build and in the dual hub motor builds are designed to detect voltage that is too low or too high and they won't work with the wrong voltage. That's pretty much it for the build. Now I can take the food container stickers off. 
The price of this board will vary a bit depending on the components you pick. I spent about $300 on this build. I'll include links in the description. You can save another $20 or $30 by using different bearings, trucks, and motor mounts from eBay and other places. My previous videos go over several hub motor builds. Pretty much all the ESC and battery setup in this build would be the same for hub motors. The main difference is that hub motors don't have any of the belt related stuff. So you basically just put the trucks on and connect the motor wires to the ESC. Here's the unexpected event I mentioned earlier. I stopped by the construction at my place one afternoon to spray water on new concrete. It just rained and was muddy, so I leaned the board against the fence for about 15 minutes. That turned out to be enough time for someone to grab it. I'll have to be more careful. In my next video I'll go over how this board performs compared to other boards. Well, actually some of it will be with this board, and also another similar board I built. I'll wrap up this video now so I can finally get it out. I keep telling myself I should try to make shorter videos and get them out more often. We'll see, I always end up trying to squeeze in everything. But before I end this video, here's a quick look at the board I built to replace the one that got stolen. It's basically similar, with a few small changes I'll go over in my next video. As always, let me know if you have any questions about the build or suggestions to improve it. Thanks for watching.